have all this smart lighting in our home, but it's hard to know just how to use it. So today I'm gonna to give you automation ideas using the brand new T1 light strip being released by Akara. I'll also be teaching you why certain light strips are gonna be great and why other ones maybe won't fit an automation idea you have so that you purchase the right one. A lot of us have smart video doorbells and during the day, I might miss it ringing. I'll put in earbuds and get to work and then I'm just likely to miss the doorbell and we get lots of deliveries of smart gear so I don't want to miss it. So using our video doorbell I've created automations that turn my light strips blue when the doorbell rings. Now, I've done this personally with Google Home and other light strips and you can do this with Amazon's voice assistant too but Akara does make this easy in their own app with their Akara G4 video doorbell. And there's one specific automation we can run with this that's even better than that basic idea. And one of the really neat things about the G4 is that it does facial recognition. And you can use that to start an automation just like you're seeing now. That automation recognizes that it's me. And so if I'm ringing the doorbell for any reason or coming up to the house, then the light strip can turn green and let my little guy know that he can answer the door. You can put all of your favorite people into this automation on the if side. And so if any of those people come up to your door, children know it's safe to go and answer it. If it's blue or maybe red works better in your household, then my guy will let me answer the door, which keeps him safe and secure. Now, many people who have hearing issues have asked me how to be notified of things like the doorbell, the laundry being done, and these are exactly the kinds of scenarios you can use light strips for. So stay tuned as I give you a few more automation ideas with light strips and the new T1 from Akara. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today is all about the ideas. But I gotta make some money and I gotta pay the people who work with me on this great team. So. I'm really happy and I'm very thankful to Akara for sponsoring today's video. Of course, that means you're gonna see their light strip, but what's amazing about working with this company is they let me do these different styles of videos that I think are actually helpful for you, not just a review of this light strip. Now in the same breath, there are some important differences between light strips like the T1 and some others. This is an addressable light strip so you can put multiple colors on it at the same time. With the T1, it's up to five colors per meter on what they call a static effect. This is what you're seeing right now. Now, Akara also has dynamic effects and they work a little differently, which I'll explain as we go. But regardless of which type of effect you wanna use, you can build many of your own scenes and this becomes very useful. This next automation took a lot of work, but it's worth it because you actually end up with your own self-made timer. You don't have to use smart speakers. You can just use the strip as a visual component. You can use whatever to trigger this. And in my specific automation, I used a voice command with Amazon. But what this takes is a number of static scenes to be created in Akara's application. What's really nice with the T1 strip versus many other strips is that you don't have to light up the entire strip. So you can actually not color a piece and that will leave it dark. This is important because I built these scenes that were broken up into the different segments. And then I slowly fill those by using weight commands in Amazon's application. And I think that's only gonna work there because I think that's the only application with that weight feature. But the nice thing about creating a routine like this is you can create multiple and you just have to change how much time you're waiting in between each 
counter portion. In the morning, I'm looking for weather information and Acara lets you create automations that can start with what the weather is or what the weather's gonna be later. That means you can base your automation off now or the future. But for me, when I get up, I wanna know the conditions now. Here's a really simple example. If it's raining and it's in the morning, then I want this light strip to turn blue. That'll indicate it for me. But we can get really sophisticated if we want. So if it's raining and yet it's quite warm, I don't want to overdress. What's nice about what Akara has done, and you can do something similar in the SmartThings app, is that you can check on both of those things. Because I'm Canadian, 20 degrees is quite warm, so I check if it's above that and then use a dynamic scene that I created that goes from blue to red using this breathing effect to indicate those two things rain and heat. Now obviously we could take this much further with automations that test things like humidity, temperature, conditions like cloudiness or rain or even snow and you can use any combination with static or dynamic scenes or both that you create yourself in the app. Now here's my sunny day scene and here's my sunny day and hot scene. Here's my cloudy with a chance of meatball scene, and here's my snow and flippin' cold scene. You can get really sophisticated and come up with your own scheme. And I'll tell you, you'll all start to recognize what your light strip is telling you. Plus you can make sure that this only happens at certain times of the day. So this is customizable to the point where it's gonna work for your family. For any light strip that you purchase, you need to understand how far it can extend how much power it uses, how bright it is, uh, the features you're gonna get, how easy it is to install, and things like that addressable component that we talked about. Now, this isn't the brightest light strip, but it's not the darkest either. This is sitting at 1% and it's still pretty bright. Its colors are really good, but not necessarily the best. It can be extended quite far, but you will need an Akara Smart Home Hub because it uses Zigbee to connect to the rest of your home. From a power perspective, it's pretty efficient and that explains some of that brightness level, but the other part of that is the density of LEDs and the way the strip reproduces its colors. For any of the color temperatures, which are the different white lights you get, uh, you have quite a range with this strip and they are produced using the two white LEDs that sit in a three LED cluster. So as you go along this strip, there are these clusters and those are what are reproducing the colors you're looking for. So for the color temperatures, it uses the cool white and the warm white LEDs, but for any color on the RGB scale, Akara's T1 strip uses the middle RGB LED to reproduce those, and they don't mix in any of the white LEDs, which I like and means that you can look directly at this strip in order to see the color that you've requested. Some other strips require you to reflect off of the wall or a surface to really see the color they're producing because they use those white LEDs. And there's another thing to watch out for with strips that use those white LEDs and it's related to how you sleep. Now, circadian rhythm is a 24-hour internal clock that your body runs to regulate alertness and, more importantly, sleep. But because this developed as part of our evolution as a species, the sun has always had an oversized impact on those cycles. Now, unfortunately, we have a lot of different lighting in our homes, and some of it is detrimental to our sleep patterns. Today, if you buy a high Kelvin light bulb or high color temperature light bulb, it looks Looks much more like the sun does in the middle of the day. Now I'm careful when I say this kind of thing, but research tells us that blue light and really those very high Kelvin lights have a negative impact on our circadian rhythm when used in the evening. 
This is why when you turn on your phone's night light mode, it eliminates that blue light and it turns it a bit orange. That's the same effect we see with lower Kelvin bulbs and the way the strip is now. And the great news is strips like these can do all of the colors of the sun. Now Apple HomeKit, Samsung SmartThings, Philips Hue, GE Sync, and Wiz all have a circadian rhythm feature where your lights will shift over the course of the day. And this can do it when it's brought into Apple HomeKit using your Acara Smart Home Hub. But in a lot of cases, lights that can do that tend to be a little more expensive and you might not be using one of those platforms to run your lighting in your home. Now, focusing on this kind of a lighting trick has actually really helped me in the last few years to get to sleep and to have better sleep patterns. And when combined with Acara's FP2 presence sensor, the automations become really powerful and very simple. And that's because this has a light sensor on it so it can tell how bright your room is and it can even break up rooms into zones you can see a video on using that sensor right there now but here are three automations that test to see if there's already a good amount of light in the space but also check the time of day So if I'm coming into my kitchen late at night, I'm looking for a snack, I'm not going to be woken up by a very high Kelvin light source. This is a simple, effective automation that helps you with your circadian rhythm. And I especially like it with light strips because you can place them under cabinets, behind furniture, and not have that direct light hit your eyes. Add as many automations as you'd like to manage your own circadian rhythm, and over time you can change when you get tired and go to bed with these kinds of automations. I'm constantly having to remind myself to drink a glass of water in the middle of the day. That's an easy automation to set at whatever time of day you'd like, or you could just use that trick that I just showed you with the FP2 to remind yourself when you walk into a room that you need to have a drink. A light strip is especially good in this scenario because you can use it to tell you about the other piece of the system that I've developed. Now I'm not gonna show you all my different supplements because everyone will have an opinion, but if the light strip goes red on Wednesday between two and four, then I know to look at the bottle in my pantry with a red piece of tape on it. The great thing about scheduling smart home products is that you can put them on Wednesday at two or Wednesday between two and four and then check if someone's come into the space. Unfortunately, it can't tell that it's just you. So this isn't perfect for larger households and for multiple people, but you could get specific lights or specific messages for each person. So you can use a certain light strip for each. There are a lot of sounds in a home, whether it's a baby crying, a smoke detector, an appliance making a sound, or someone having a good sleep and snoring away. Now this automation idea is really a set of ideas and it will require you to have an echo speaker in your home and then use Amazon's app to drive these. Amazon speakers have become really good at recognizing sounds and Reed over at Smart Home Solver said he had used them for a baby crying version of this kind of an automation. But for me, I'm pretty focused on securing my home and making sure that we're dealing with situations that are out of the norm. So I set up an automation that's based off of an Echo Studio that sits in the corner of my kitchen. It'll listen for water running, but I'm not going to run that automation immediately. So we're going to see the light strip light up after a few minutes of water running. We can get more aggressive with colors and we can get notifications sent to us that the water's been running for a number of minutes. 
So what's nice about this feature from Amazon is that it can be progressive in your home in terms of the response that you're being asked to take. The light strip provides a perfect visual. And again, you can customize those based on all the different scenes you'd like to create. Before I go on to a few rapid fire home automation ideas for you, I have to answer a question from our audience. This is a new segment I'm doing on the channel and if you wanna get your question featured, you're gonna have a higher opportunity for that if you become a channel member, which carries with it a lot of other benefits too. But Marius was watching our previous comparison video on six light strips and he asked why I would prefer matter over thread or just thread over matter over Wi-Fi when it came to light strips. And this is a Zigbee one, so what do I think there, right? Anytime you have a low bandwidth smart home device, you should use another protocol like Zigbee, Z-Wave, or Thread. They don't need the bandwidth of Wi-Fi or the speed of it. And unfortunately, when Wi-Fi gets overtaxed, our smart homes tend to fall apart. So you wanna save that system as much as you can for those high bandwidth connections like smart cameras, streaming sticks, TVs, or phones and tablets. Now, in my opinion, everything else should be pretty much on Thread or Zigbee at this point. Although there are still cases where Z-Wave is really important, but I haven't seen a good Z-Wave light strip in many years. So that's where the T1 using that Zigbee connection is a really great option. And while some people will shy away because it means that you gotta have a hub, it does tend to mean that your smart home will end up more reliable over the long haul. And just as a side benefit, the smart home hubs are usually better at running more complex automations which you should be seeing in today's video. This is maybe my favorite automation because it's increased my home security and it was so simple. Now, one of the lessons my father imparted on me was that security often comes down to just being a little more secure than the next person. Leaving the door open or unlocked is obviously a pretty big issue because you're gonna be the easiest one to get on the street. The great news is you could do this one in a few ways. And even if you don't have a smart lock, you can still do this with a couple of door and window sensors. I've recently reviewed the U100 lock and you can use that lock with this. It's definitely my recommendation for a door lock right now. Today, as soon as any door lock in my home is unlocked, I get a yellow status light on every light strip in my home. This is a simple automation because you want it to happen pretty much at any time. If it remains unlocked, we can turn the light strips red. But what I would rather do is to turn the light strips red if the door is open. That way somebody walks into a room knowing something has to be dealt with. So for those of you without a smart door lock, then one of the two door sensors that I have on my door right now from a car can be used with your door like this. It's gonna look a little funny being on your lock, but it's not that bad. Now with most light strips, you're getting a lot of effects. And I actually think the T1 Cube Pro from Acara is a really interesting controller. Now you can just flip it over to a different side that will allow you to change the effect on this. Now you've got to set up an automation for each side, but as you do that, you can go from very calm effects all the way to more frantic effects. And if you'd like, you do like I did where you shake the cube and it turns the whole thing off. Now that's our video for today and the links to everything I've talked about are down in the description below. But I'm betting for a lot of you, you wanna learn more about light strips. And I did a full comparison video of six of the top light strips today. That's an extremely educational video that'll teach you all the nuances, so go watch it there. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, and of course, don't hate, automate.